we all know that we'll need to use electrical power very differently in the future. The way we generate, store and use power for heating and lighting our buildings, cooking our meals and of course charging our EVs is changing very fast. We're all seeing more wind turbines, more solar panels and we're becoming aware of technologies like ground source and air source heat pumps. Yet what we can see at present is just the tip of the iceberg, which is an apt analogy because that is what all this is about, reducing the use of fossil fuels and preventing climate change. But is all the backroom stuff in our buildings up to the challenge? And how will this affect the power management systems that integrate energy supply and demand into our national grid? Caroline Royal and Giuseppe Scro from Eaton, the international power management company, are here with me today to explain. I love this. I love a model. I love that. I've Don't never seen a model pilot. It. I won't touch it. <laughs> But that is amazing. What a brilliant model. And, and this really, so the idea of this is then it shows us how the grid operates and how it could operate in future. Can you tell me what Eaton does? Because it's, it's not a straightforward. It's not like you make this and here it is. It's a bit more complex than that. So Eaton is a power management specialist, power management company. We're a global business and we've been in power management for just over 100 years now. Right, okay. So, so you're... we get power management, power distribution, yeah. it's our sort of core business, right. and, you know, power distribution backbone within a building. That, that's what we do. Uh, and what we're looking at now with, with carbon zero and, and net zero is how do we support that transition, the energy transition over to renewables? How do we support buildings with their infrastructure to become effectively part of the grid or a microgrid themselves. So Caroline, can you explain that the, the, the concept then of, of buildings as a grid? Because it's kind of, you know, it might confuse some people. What, what does that mean? It means uh, your building becomes an active part of the grid, so or a, a grid itself, so the building as a grid. Um, you can generate, you can store, you use and, and eventually be able to feed back into the grid. So it becomes a, a, a grid on its own as well as interacting with the, the larger, wider grid. Right. So one of the, the you know, very common comments about renewables is it's not all the time, it's, it's, it comes and goes, it's intermittent. How important then is energy storage, do you think, in the future as we, as we develop this sort of system? You're right, uh, renewables are a great source uh, because they are uh, zero carbon, but also they are intermittent uh, var variable. Energy storage sits in between because so we need to think that in the future also uh, the loads will be uh, variable. Uh, we have the electrification of heating, heat pumps, and also electrical vehicle. It's important to store the energy if you have the on-site renewable, uh, so it will be clean. But also if you don't have renewable as well, you can use the energy uh, in the storage when it's uh, less expensive and used for, for example, charge your electrical vehicle uh, to offset the cost. So that it does, it, but it really acts as a buffer as well, doesn't it, I suppose, when there is cheap electricity, even from the grid, you can store a bit of that and then use it when it's expensive. I mean, that, and is that something that you would develop like software controls to do that rather than having a building manager who's going, oh, well, better slide that up and, you know, doesn't need that hands-on controlling, I'm, I'm guessing. No, we, we have an energy management system and software that learns and adapts and, and you can have real-time um, notifications that you can run reports over the last you know, week, month, year right. to, to understand and that's an ever-evolving solution. Right. And so where do you see, what do you see as the next step then from where we are now? Because this is, you know, there are more and more buildings that are starting finally to put solar panels on their roofs, uh, you know, in, across the board and, and batteries are getting cheaper and more, more you know, easier to put in. Do you, what, what do you think is the next step? It's about connecting the, the systems together. So connecting the, the the generation, the solar panels, to the storage, to the electric vehicles, to the use of that building, and that building becomes a grid in its own right, buildings as a grid. 
and I mean the utopia is they but all interact, all they all other. talk to yeah. each other and they all talk to the, to the grid itself. Right. Giuseppe, I mean when you've got a building with this, with let's say a lot of solar on the roof like a big warehouse or a big factory, because I, I, I can't quite imagine the scale of that because you're talking far more power than anyone would ever have in their house you know and then the batteries on that so that take is that where the management of that power comes in that's where you need the controls indeed indeed and also energy is important because also when we move from the centralized to decentralized there will be more stress in the grid so you never know if you talk with iv charger you never know when you charge but also where you charge so having on-site generation on you know, distribution level, it helps to relieve some stress from the distribution system. Right. So that's really, I mean, in a way, the, one of the key roles, with, which I can see when you look at the, the, our, our energy use in a day and you see this big spike, which is in the afternoons yeah, and early yeah. evenings, you know, you go, oh, that's when everyone demands it. But if you then, once you learn a bit more about how the grid works, you realize, oh, that is the most expensive electricity we have to produce. Mm -hmm. which means that and it's generally the dirtiest and it's yep. and um, anything you can do whenever you talk to someone who works at the grid level at the national grid that's yeah. all they want is to reduce yeah. that spike you know that would yeah. make a huge difference yeah. and i mean one of the things that's difficult to sort of fully understand because there's all the stuff about you know it's not always windy it's not always sunny all those things but i think once you start to look at a uh, like a year of, of a building with a lot of solar on it with battery storage you then start it, mm. it, you kind of can't judge it in like a half hour period you've got to look at it over a slightly longer time but there, is that something that you you would discuss with p possible clients is the kind of longer term yeah. impact that, that can have absolutely yes i mean i mean we this is, I mean, we've mentioned it's a scalable solution. A, a hospital is not used in the same way, you know, yeah. it doesn't use energy in the same way, you know, an apartment block does or an office block or, or a warehouse or, or, you know, with a, with a fleet of vehicles. So every system is going to be different. Yeah. And it's about working with the bu building owners to understand, you know, what they know about their energy use. I mean, and they'll know a lot more than they think they do about how their fleet works and, and yeah. things like that. So it's, it's taking that knowledge and, and you know, building a system that works for them now, but that being a software led system, it's constantly able to evolve and change and tweak and you know, we, we can work with them right. to, to make the system right for them and their usage. So then Eaton's role, is, is, it, is it mainly that, that software, that intelligence of how to operate the system, or do you actually produce hardware that allows you to do things? <laughs> We, we do the hardware as well, so right. we, we manufacture the, the battery units and right. the storage capabilities. Uh, we've got EV chargers, so we bought uh, a company called Green Motion. All right, okay. Um, earlier this year, we've been working with them for a few years, uh, and they're a Swiss company that have been in the EV market for going on 10 years right. now. So they've got a very established technology and, and product, and yeah, I mean, that's come into our range as well. Right. So. So that and that can all be tied together. That can be kind of yes. centrally controlled, if you like. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. So that yeah, we've got the energy management system and you know, charge point operating systems and and software. Right. So, yeah, I mean it's it's you know it's the whole ecosystem. Yeah. Um, but equally, some people might be further down the road with this you know strategy already sure. and you know want to tie that all together that's yeah. that's possible as well so then the electric vehicle driver are there benefits for them from this from this sort of connected technology the perception is without enough charges i don't want to risk buying an electric vehicle yeah. i'll get stranded somewhere so if we've got this technology that supports a charging infrastructure you're going to be able to charge where you need to, how fast you need to, and you know, at a reasonable cost yeah. as well. Some people are under the impression you can just put charges in, yeah. but they don't talk about the capacity, they don't understand the building capacity from the grid. You know, adding additional capacity from the grid is expensive and it takes quite a long time. Yeah. And this is a, a way of sort of supporting that and, and hopefully meaning that the buildings don't have to do that. Also, I mean, we've talked about the power distribution backbone and, you know, the switch gear in, in the building, that needs to adapt to, to support the infrastructure as well. So the building blocks from our history allow us to, you know, to, to support building owners and, you know, business owners yeah. in this transition. 
Because now there's one thing that one of the things this system like this really relies on is software and the internet and communication between machines and buildings and everything. And then I think there's a, a legitimate anxiety about cyber security, about making sure that is secure and safe for, for, for many reasons. I mean, is that something that you, you focus on? So our system, our software is uh, secure, uh, safe and also interoperable. So they can connect with any other system that the, the business or the client has. Oh, that is fantastic. Well, I love the model. I'm just going to say that I love a, a good model and this one's brilliant. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Uh, fascinating what you're doing. Uh, you know, I'm really impressed. Thank you so much for coming along today and explaining it so clearly. And uh, that basically, that's all. Uh, there will be all the links to the, uh, the work that Eton is doing under this video. And uh, obviously, if you want to subscribe to Fully Charged Plus, we'd be very grateful because we think you're wonderful as an audience. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>